as I was kind of having this high, Jared was having this low with, you know, missing the Olympic team, getting a concussion, trying to, taking months to figure that out. And uh, it was definitely a challenge, I thought, for the two yeah. of us. She was killing it, and I was kind of taking a back seat. It was funny because that is like the opposite. You know, you've always been the opposite. I was kind of killing it for a couple of years. And well, I was were... doing school and not killing it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, it was it was weird because the dynamic definitely changed. Totally. Um, I felt like I was trying to support her a little bit, and she kind of didn't want me to step onto her races. And even going to High V was a little bit of a yeah. uh, bargaining. Um, because it, it was her race, you know, and High V was her race. But I, but I wanted to go because you know I wanted to race race well there. And uh, I mean, in the end, I tried to help as much as I could while focusing on my race. And I, mean, I don't know if it worked out for either of us really. <laughs> <laughs> I think the hardest thing about racing for the two of us is that. Um, that I'm probably a little more chill when it comes to racing and Alicia's a little more has to do things in a particular way and so sometimes when we're at races together it, it doesn't mix but then again it's nice to have somebody else there. You know? Yeah I'd say it's more for like comfort we actually race better when one of us is racing and the other isn't and the other can kind of just fall into a supportive role when we're both racing we're both kind of fighting for the other to be in a supportive role. So it's like, you go get dinner. No, you go get dinner. So in that case, we end up just like bringing Jared's agent, Mike O'Neill, or like, it's better if we kind of have a third wheel with this. So it's, uh, yeah, we, it's almost better when we're, it's kind of good that I've switched disciplines. And we can, when we're with each other, generally one of us isn't racing. So it kind of balances itself out. We have a couple of rungs to climb up though. I mean, yeah. you got Greg and Laura. Yeah. Right now, Tim and Miranda. Yeah, but they're not married. They're not married. That doesn't count. Doesn't count for married. Like, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of power going on in that household. Um, you know, I, I think it's interesting to have two athletes supporting each other. Um, I think it helps out a lot. I don't think it's really easy to do uh, to do triathlon and not have somebody. I think it changes your year. So. Alicia made more money than me this past year. I made more money than her the year before. Right winner. So yeah, so it kind of changes, but I think it's kind of the cool thing is that there's there, that we have that dynamic. I mean, it's it's kind of fun to to be able to help somebody else out. But I mean, you're ready to get yeah. out of the sport a couple years Multiple ago. Multiple times. When I met Jared, I was ready to retire. And then I almost retired like two years ago. And Jared kind of lets me get there on my own and then I get there and he's like finally <laughs> and I'm back into racing and training again so it's without him I would have for sure left this way for sure yeah and and it's something that I love watching is watching watching you race better and uh, yeah. and watching you perform I mean honestly this year was like the coolest thing ever I mean, you had a better year than I did. It's like second place, second place, first place, second place, second place. And I'm like, okay, I just got 20th and 50th. I gotta step it up. That blasted Sarah Hotskins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a great friend though, so coming second to her is, is uh, no big deal, but you know, it's, it's great having some good friends on the podium. One thing that I've always, I ask uh, couples about is, you know, it, it, it's when you start a family. I think Becky Laval, I think, is a great example. I picked their brains like crazy this year. When you have a kid, how has it changed your relationship? How has it changed your training and racing? And, um, you know, so for me, I've really looked to them as a resource for kind of like, how do you, how can you be really great triathletes but not sacrifice the desire to want to have kids and have a family down the road? So um, I've really looked to them for advice on that. You know, Greg and Laura have a different perspective. They're kind of waiting until their careers are done. And it's, it's, it's cool to talk to each couple and find out how they make, came to that decision. And uh, so that's my perspective on this year. But that's, if you had asked me last year, it would have been a completely different, I would have seen couples in like a completely different person. That's it, how I used it. And it's fun because uh, Sarah and Nate just moved down the yeah, street from us. Totally, so, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of cool having another couple close by and they're kind of the exact same time is us. Yep. We were, we were joking, <laughs> <laughs> joking about how we both been married for five years now. So which is it's like we got crazy. married like a week apart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Sarah really, really wants to have kids, and so we always joke that we want to come back, and it's gonna be like mommy domination. <laughs>
in a few years. Yeah, let Sarah have kids first so you can, you know, she'll well, go away for a year. We need then. to, like, time oh, it out. <laughs> we need to time it out. So every year, literally, at the end of every year, we're like, are you ready? No, I'm not. Okay. Like, we don't want to do it at the same time. That's smart. Because then it's just leaving this whole door open for just someone to go make the money for the drink. <laughs> so. We had some friends in Claremont, and we just went and stayed with them. McClarty had just moved down there, and so I honestly, I really feel like Sarah McClarty moving to Claremont was like the beginning of Claremont becoming a triathlon mecca again. Like, yeah, it's it's kind of cool. I mean, I'm definitely a Massachusetts boy. I always will be. But <laughs> it's, it's, Florida's just, the weather's perfect, the pool's perfect, the biking is perfect, the running is really good, and, you know, it's... It's about finding a place where you feel comfortable and feel relaxed, and I think the pace of life is pretty chill down there, um, and which I think helps all of us as triathletes down there. And then we have Wednesday swims, which Sarah leads, and it's me and Sarah, and we've had some of the Chileans in town, we've had some Americans yeah. drop by, and you know we'll probably have 15 or 20 people swimming, and it's kind of cool to have that, you know, just a pool of pro triathletes swimming together. So it's, it's, it's really just, I love showing up to the clay trail on a Sunday morning and bumping into like five world champions. I think that's like my favorite part. I mean, on Twitter I've like started the phrase only in Claremont because, you know, went out for a ride, started with Lisa Bentley, finished off with one of the railers, bumped into Nina Crab. It's like, you just see all these really talented athletes and I just love that I get to rub shoulders with them and sharing their stories and, and continue to train and race with them. So I think that's yeah, it's warm. And convincing more and more people to move. <laughs> it doesn't bother you that there are alligators in the lakes there, and you know, like I'm not scared of sharks here. I don't think that. Yeah. I don't think about that, but a gator, man, that would. Yeah, I, I mean, we know. definitely are aware of it, and we've definitely seen them. Water moccasins scare us more because oh, yeah. that's like a for sure hospital trip if <laughs> you get bit by one of those. At least an alligator, maybe. I mean, you're probably still going to the hospital, but. Yeah, I mean, it's. Well, we the see winter. them, but you just don't go to the reeds. Like, if it's reedy and looks like a nice alligator home, don't go over there. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figure there isn't much place for them to hide in the middle of the lake, so... Yeah. The worst thing you can, like, bump into for us is actually wild boars. Really? Yeah, when we're out running. Like, they're the most aggressive thing you can bump into. start running with a gun and just put on the bar <laughs> and have dinner. Yeah, so yeah. it's, uh... <laughs> the boars, I'd say, are like the scariest thing. I ran into them when I was in Lake Louisa. Yeah. Bears, Bobcats. Bobcats. <laughs> there's, definitely, there's definitely wildlife down there. It's cool because yeah. on the on the clay trail, um, you'll see snake tracks going across. Yeah, different prints, and you're like, oh god, what's out here? <laughs> Sounds like a great place to train. <laughs> but it's awesome. I swear, I moved to Claremont. <laughs>